Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Hey, I have some uh I have a couple announcements here before we get started. First of all, if you have not checked out Kelly, aka Autumn in Asia's latest video, I think that's a shame. He put a lot of work into it. It's absolutely fascinating in my opinion, and you should definitely go check it out. He stayed at a guest house recently when he was on his travels, and he was allowed to interview a woman who is going to be talking about her time uh, as a child during the Khmer Rouge and her favorite pair of shoes. Those two things will connect. You'll have to watch it to find out, but they connect. Uh, she not only wrote a book about this story and what happened to her, but she's also a very talented artist and he's gonna be showing off some of her fantastic artwork and paintings. Uh, it's one of those, you know, uh, human interest stories that just grabs your attention. It's not very long. And uh, I think it's a shame it hasn't got more views. So please go check out that video. Uh, Autumn and Asia's channel is, of course, linked in my description below. And always uh, remember that I have books for sale. I have five books, actually, including Living Cambodia, A Guide for Living in the Kingdom of Wonder, and others. They start at just a dollar. And there are links. there's a link down below where you can go and check them all out and purchase the ones you want. And also, if you want to be a friend of the channel, you want to help support the channel, and you want to get some really cool free stuff at, by, at the end of the year, then you can donate through PayPal or Ko-Fi.com. Yeah, just, just click those links down below. Go ahead and send a donation. We're trying to get a hundred more dollars this month, and if you do that, well, I got some good stuff for you uh, coming up for the holiday season. Some things I think you're really going to dig. Uh, and hopefully you enjoy them as much as I'm enjoying making them. All right, with all that being said, let's get started. All right, so, <clears throat> someone had a recommendation for me to make a video about this topic. They wanted to know if there were any statistics on how and the most common form of ways that expats die in Cambodia. I thought that was an interesting topic. I mean, people die around the world every day. And perhaps knowing how that happens can help scientists and doctors and uh, other medical professionals come up with solutions because uh, they seem intent on trying to keep us alive for as long as possible even long after we wish we were dead <laughs> well I I did some research I looked some things up and uh, I really couldn't find much I guess statistics about how foreigners die in a another country isn't isn't really recorded all that often or all that much perhaps some countries don't keep those statistics or make them available to organizations that's what I'm guessing but what I did find when it comes to Cambodia it was kind of surprising the the last time these were tabulated was in 2018 oddly the year I first arrived in Cambodia and they were kind of shocking to me they really were because if you were to ask me uh, in your opinion if you just wanted my opinion on what I thought would be the number one cause of death among ex expats in Cambodia my first thought would have been uh, uh, cardiac related instances heart attack strokes things like that mainly because I would say it's it's fair to assess that uh, a good majority of people living in Cambodia from other countries are uh, older retired people and then in in the United States at least uh, heart disease is rampant I believe it's the 
number one or number two killer among people of a certain age. So that would have been my assumption here. But I was pretty shocked at what I found. According to the report from 2018, the number one cause of death for foreigners in Cambodia was actually suicide. Followed closely by drug related incidents, overdoses, things like that, and then heart disease, heart attacks, strokes, and then everything else followed the vehicular accidents, you know, car crashes, motorcycle crashes, uh, natural deaths, even some. Uh, they were just listed as, you know, accidents without any qualifying information. An accident can mean anything. So that was pretty shocking to me. That uh, suicide was number one. It was the number one way expats die in Cambodia. It was kind of sad. It made me kind of sad. And the reasons for somebody thinking those thoughts are many and varied, and I'm not going to go into all those. Because you never truly know what's going on in the mind of a person. There's people that could be debating and struggling internally, and you would never know it. They've seen their old happy go lucky cells and uh, you might not even be aware that they are struggling mentally so always be nice to people that's what I'm trying to tell you but I thought that would be now that I found that out I thought this would be a good time to remind people because I have talked about this in the past I don't think I made a video about it so this would be a good time to remind people to examine, examine yourself and the reasons why, truly, deep down, the reasons why you want to move to Cambodia or any other country for that matter, not just Cambodia. Because if, if you're moving to a different country, to get as far away from where you are as possible simply because or your main motivation is because you're trying to run away from your problems whether they be mental or otherwise well I problems like that don't just go away because you make a move those kind of those problems have a tendency to catch up with you again sooner or later down the road and if not treated, hello. And if not treated, they lead to very dire consequences. And I think it's important and difficult. I'm not saying it's easy for you to dig way down deep into your into your psyche, into your soul, whatever you want to call it. And make that determination for yourself on why you're moving to this country or, like I said, perhaps another country. Now, I'll be the first one to admit as a non-licensed, unknowledgeable person, civilian, untrained in the psychological or arts, <laughs> let's say, <clears throat> but I think there is a certain amount of good that can come if you are suffering from depression or other mental issues by removing yourself from a place where there are many triggers for your symptoms to show up. So if you get stressed easily and suffer from depression because of different things in your country, 
and you move to a country that doesn't have those same issues, that can help. That can be a great relief when you're not around all those stressors or triggers that bring those symptoms and thoughts on. But also keep in mind that it is a stopgap. It's not a cure. It's not going to make those problems go away and they could rear their ugly heads at any any time. One thing I do know from reading certain articles and I, I subscribe to a lot of uh, science related newsletters and things and I like those newsletters because they take all this scientific jargon and kind of make it easy for the dumb dumbs like me to figure out <laughs> I like that <clears throat> I don't need a dictionary by my side to figure out what they're trying to say but I do know that scientists know a lot about the brain the actual physical muscle we have in our craniums because we can touch it, we can feel it, we can uh, test it, we can do all that kind of stuff. But we know very little in comparison about the mind. Some people might call the mind the soul. I don't know if I believe that because I don't believe in the, the soul the way that religious or spiritual people might, but I think the soul is the mind. And that we know very little about because it's an intangible. We can't see it, we can't touch it, we can't take it out, cut it up, try to examine it. So it's difficult to get a precise scientific assessment on what is going on out there, what really causes, what's the cause of depression? Is it, is it DNA and genetics? Some say yes. Is it, you know, it's the age-old question, nature versus nurture. Is it the way you were raised? Some would say yes. Is it the environment you find yourself in? Some would say yes. Is it a combination of all three? A lot of people would say yes. <clears throat> but the fact is, no matter how many times they say, yes, this is probably it, or yes, this could be it, the fact is we don't know a whole lot about it as far as empirical proof and evidence goes. So yeah, while moving to Cambodia, being in a, re a more relaxed atmosphere than uh, from where you might be from, can be beneficial to your mental health, and maybe even your overall health, a lot of fresh, healthy food around here. It's still not a, uh, like a cure or anything that can guaranteed can be guaranteed to be permanent and I think a lot of people come here to spend their retirement years and it's easy to feel a sense of youthfulness no matter how old you are when you're here because it's a very vibrant country that always seems to be on the go. But there is always that uh, other side. Pretty soon people might find themselves I don't know regretting their decision. Something might happen to them here. It kind of shatters that perhaps impossible dream they had of how perfect a place is going to be <laughs> until you move there and realize that there are problems everywhere in the world. They might become disillusioned. They might become financially destitute. They might have thought they found the love of their lives and uh, had their heart broken. But something that just pushes them over the edge, triggers whatever part of the mind that depression lurks in. 
and then they start having these thoughts. So yeah, I really encourage you to think about these things and don't come over here and uh, just become another uh, statistic. All right. And by the way, no matter where you are in the world, if you're having these kinds of thoughts and you need help, please get help. Don't be afraid to reach out. It's not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of great strength. It takes a lot more effort to admit you need help than it is to sit there and suffer silently until it's too late. And my email address is down below. If you have nobody else to turn to, I'm not a therapist. I'm not going to be able to talk you down off a ledge or anything, but sometimes it might feel good to just vent. Just to, have somebody, just to have somebody that you know is listening or reading your thoughts and your feelings. Just somebody who will stand by you and listen and say, Yep, that's messed up, man. That's fucked up. Sometimes that helps. But whatever you do, just find somebody. Get the help you need. And when you come over here, come over here the right way and enjoy your life man because it's a beautiful country to do that all right be sure to check out all my links down below like i said i have paypal and ko-fi.com i have my books down below my other channel horror reads and other channels vlogging from this part of the world they are all down below as well all right from Siem Reap, Cambodia. I will talk to you guys in the next one.